Throughout history, there have been many periods of technological and economic growth. But in all previous cases to the Industrial Revolution, these periods eventually came to an end. But not the Industrial Revolution. Iconic for the scenes of black smoke rising over tall chimneys from factories, it instead only moved forward. There are many reasons for this, such as population growth, increased demand for goods, expansion of trade, abundance of raw materials, and new forms of communication. In this video, we will discuss 10 of the most influential inventions and effects of the early Industrial Revolution extending from 1750 to 1850. Before the discovery of the Americas, European sample crops consisted mostly of grains, including wheat, rye, and oats. These crops yielded far inferior calories per acre than their American counterparts, limiting the extensive European population growth. But by the 16th century, with the introduction of American staple crops, European population grew exponentially in the cool and humid regions of Europe. Potatoes, originating in South America, yielded two to three times more calories than the grains previously harvested. Maize, an American corn, was grown throughout Europe and added considerably to the food supply. As a result, Europe's population grew from 100 million in 1650 to 266 million in 1850. The larger food supply caused greater population growth which fueled the Industrial Revolution by increasing demand for goods and by lowering labor costs. One of the biggest contributing factors to the Industrial Revolution was the increased access to cheap energy, mostly through fossil fuels, and the first machine to convert a fossil fuel into mechanical energy was a steam engine. Before the 18th century, mines dug to access metals, ores, and coal filled with water faster than could be taken out by horsepower pumps. So from 1702 to 1712, a British man named Thomas Newcomb developed the first practical steam engine. The device could pump water out of mines much faster than previous pumps, but due to its ravenous appetite for fuel, it can only be used efficiently by coal mines. Work. Fuel was readily available and cheap, but in 1769, another British engineer named James Watt made the engine more efficient, resulting in the steam engine's widespread use in industry, ships, and eventually locomotives. Iron had long been used throughout Africa and Eurasia for tools, weapons, and household items. During the Song period, Chinese forages produced cast iron in large quantities, even after the Song iron was a common and inexpensive material in China. However, deforestation and areas of production eventually caused the price for fuel and consequently iron itself to rise, meaning that outside of China, iron was a relatively rare and valuable metal. But in 1709, a British farmer discovered that coke, coal that had impurities cooked out, could be used in place of charcoal, meaning that iron could be cheaply and efficiently made as coal was plentiful resource in Britain. Coke iron allowed a great expansion in size of individual blast furnaces. As a result, Britain's iron population grew from 1,700 tons in 1740 to 3 million tons in 1844. The availability of cheap iron made the mass production of objects such as guns, hardware, and tools much more widespread. The large supply of coal and iron largely explains the fast pace of industrialization within Western Europe at the start of the 19th century. After Watt's patent over the steam engine expired in 1800, inventors began experimenting with more powerful high-pressure engines. By the 1920s, England had many railways in which horses pulled heavy wagons. In 1829, the Liverpool and Manchester Railroad organized a contest between steam-powered locomotives and horse-drawn wagons. The locomotive Comet, built by George Stevenson, won when it pulled a 20-ton train up to 30 miles per hour. After this event, a railroad mania swept over Britain. The introduction of steam-powered trains on railroads had the most transformative effect on the United States, with 6,087 miles of rail being laid in 1840, and an additional 21,000 miles being laid in the 1850s. Railroads allowed the quick and efficient movement of goods such as iron, coal, and textiles, along with greatly improving transportation, along with fueling construction and creating more jobs. The cotton gym was a machine that quickly and easily separated cotton fibers from their seeds, enabling much greater productivity than manual cotton separation. The cotton gym was created by American inventor Eli Whitney in 1793 and patented in 1794. Whitney's gin used a combination of wire screens and small wire hooks to pull the cotton through, while brushes continuously removed the loose cotton lint to prevent jams. It revolutionized the cotton industry in the United States and allowed the supply of cotton to reach the demand of the consumers. Britain became a major consumer of American cotton with their large textile industries. But as a note, the cotton gin also led to the growth of slavery in the American South as the demand for cotton workers rapidly increased. 
The cotton industry, the largest industry of this period, illustrates the rule of mechanization perfectly. Beginning in the 1760s, a series of inventions revolutionized the spinning of cotton thread. First, the jenny, which allowed one worker to spin six to seven threads at once, and later up to 80. Next, the water frame invented in 1769, which spun threads strong enough to be used without linen. Lastly, the mule, invented in 1785, combined the best features of both these machines and required fewer workers to spin more and better thread. Cotton mills required very few workers and along with frequent hiring of children, the cotton industry became an even more profitable business due to the mechanization of production. Mechanization of all industries offered two advantages, increased productivity for the manufacturer and lower prices for the consumer. Before the 19th century, the night was a dangerous time to be out, and almost everyone went to bed at sundown and got up at dawn. For the managers of industrial establishments, daylight hours were far too short, especially in the winter months. They knew that they could keep their factories running after sunset if they had light, but lanterns and candles were costly and dangerous. Wealthy people wanted to light up their homes, and businesses and governments also needed light as well. While cities had sought to illuminate major infrastructures since the 18th century, most city streets remained dark and dangerous. This situation inspired inventors to look for many new different ways to produce light. By 1806, Frederick Albert Windsor founded the National Light and Heat Company to produce and distribute gas in London. As a result, businesses that had already become much more efficient due to mechanization now could stay open much longer and increase productivity as a whole. Mass production, the making of many identical items, and breaking the process into simple repetitive tasks is a hallmark of the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution changed the way the goods are produced and gave birth to mass production. By the division of labor and increased relevance of machines and factories, people and society was changed as an impact of mass production and the involvement of factories. And the Industrial Revolution still affects the world today with regards to mass production and how today's factories operate. Therefore, the impact of the Industrial Revolution on factories, and therefore mass production, changes the world we live in today. After the Italian scientist Alessandro Volta invented the battery in 1800, making it possible to produce an electric current, many inventors tried to apply electricity to communication. The first practical electric telegraph system was developed almost simultaneously in England and America. In 1837, in England, Charles Wheatstone and William Cook introduced the five-wire telegraph, while the American Samuel Morse introduced a code of dots and dashes that could be transmitted with a single wire. The railroad companies allowed telegraph companies to string wires along the tracks in exchange for the right to send telegraphs from station to station, announcing the departure and arrival of trains. Such messages made railroads much safer and one more efficient. By the late 1840s, telegraph wires crisscrossed the United States and Western Europe. In 1851, the first submarine telegraph cable was laid across the English Channel from England to France, cutting the transmission of news from up to four days to minutes. It was the beginning of a network that eventually connected the entire globe. No longer were communications limited to the speed of a sailing ship, a galloping horse, or a fast-moving train. Together, railroads and telegraphs had an enormous economic impact. Telegraphs dramatically transformed market intelligence by making it possible for producers to keep track of distant consumer needs and prices, thus making markets more efficient and profits more dependable. The Industrial Revolution greatly impacted the environment. The world saw a major increase in population, which along with an increase in living standards led to the depletion of natural resources. The use of chemicals and fuel in factories resulted in increased air and water pollution and an increased use of fossil fuels. Because of the large use of coal as a fuel in the Industrial Revolution, many cities started to see the environmental impacts of humans. A great example is in the 1800s, moths in London began to turn gray as the smog and suit of factories made all the trees turn gray and then of course led to natural selection and only the gray moths survived. Another example is in 1850, the first acid rain fell on London. This is due to cold power plants along with other human-produced sulfur and nitrogen compounds that were released in the atmosphere. The Industrial Revolution can be seen as the start of global warming and global pollution. It is something that is still seen today and the effects of the Industrial Revolution are still heard frequently throughout this generation. 
Thank you for watching and I hope this helped.